Okay, so it's uh, another absolutely stunning day in uh, Stellenbosch. Uh, spring has really sprung. Uh, we had a little bit of rain during this week, but uh, it seems uh, that things have really cleared up uh, very nicely. And uh, so, time for a, a little walk onto main campus. Uh, I have a meeting, but uh, on the way I thought it'd be great just to uh, talk to you about uh, issues of church and state. I had an article published uh, that went sort of semi-viral, as viral as theological articles can go. It ended up in the Mail and Guardian and uh, the Times uh, Live and uh, did a few interviews on uh, various radio stations around issues of church and state. So I thought, let me share a little bit with you my ideas, uh, because a lot of people have been asking about them uh, around the notions of church and state. So uh, just across the road from, uh, from the Faculty of Theology, that's uh, the faculty over there, um, we have this very, very beautiful old uh, historic church. Um, let's just show you what we've got here. Isn't that beautiful? So um, that is the uh, Dutch Reformed Church Muddergemeente, the sort of mother church of uh, the Dutch Reformed uh, Church here in Stellenbosch. And uh, it's a beautiful old uh, church building. Uh, lots of tourists uh, come along here uh, and spend some time in the building, uh, just in quiet, just enjoying it. And it happens to be at the very top of uh, Church Street uh, in Stellenbosch, which is now a sort of major uh, tourist attraction. How's that for a cool little Vespa? It's actually called an Ape. Uh, spelled almost like ape. Cool little scooter. Uh, I need to get one of those to augment my, uh, my Vespa collection. <laughs> I don't think Megan would be very happy. I don't think my budget would be very happy to be honest. It'd be great to be able to load my mountain bike in the back of a Ape. Uh, to go for a little ride. Okay, so uh, behind me here is uh, one of my favorite uh, features of uh, the uh, sort of public spaces in Stellenbosch. It's a beautiful artwork of uh, the face of Nelson Mandela. I don't know if you can see it there behind me. Uh, it's actually a map of uh, this part of the country which has been carved out and uh, uh, in metal placed on uh, marble and uh, when you look at it it, it shows uh, the face of Nelson Mandela and this is in the uh, sort of gardens of uh, the uh, Stellenbosch town hall or city hall representing the, uh, the that aspect of local government uh, here in Stellenbosch. So between the, uh, the church that we stopped at uh, a little bit earlier and uh, this uh, space, the town hall, we see almost these two centers of uh, social and public identity framed. Uh, the church on the one hand that provides uh, for many in South Africa, in fact 85% of South Africans, uh, social, moral and religious identity. And the state uh, behind me here that uh, provides for South Africans in terms of the security, uh, of, of their public life, uh, regulates uh, aspects of their life so that they can live uh, freely and find opportunities uh, to flourish. So between these two spaces we have uh, the church and the state uh, represented. So together with a colleague, uh, Dr. Vessel Bentley at uh, the University of South Africa, I wrote a little book uh, in 2012 called, which was called between Capital and Cathedral, Essays on Church and State Relationships. And there are a number of really wonderful uh, contributions in that book by uh, various activists and academics, uh, church people and people who have an understanding of the law. But in that book uh, I wrote a chapter in which I argued uh, very specifically for a separation between these two publics in society, the public of the church and uh, the public of the state. And uh, the argument that I made in that book uh, has tended to, uh, to shock some of uh, South Africa's Christian sensibilities. You see, in that book I argued for the point that the most desirable kind of state that a Christian could hope for is a secular state. 
So one of the questions that I get asked is uh, how it's possible that a person who has uh, Christian religious convictions could argue that there should be a secular state. Now let me say first off, um, I use that word secular in a very particular manner. Um, the understanding that I have of uh, the secular is not the kind of harsh secularity that in some senses could actually be considered anti-religious. Rather what I'm talking about is the kind of secularity in which the government of a nation doesn't have any particular uh, religious conviction. It, it doesn't promote or uh, lay a claim or a stake on any particular religious conviction. So that the citizens of a nation, uh, regardless of their religious background or conviction, or having no religious conviction at all, may have equal rights and equal protections uh, before the state. So it's in that sense that I use the word secular. And this is particularly important for my students uh, who will be watching this video uh, in, in months and years to come for their assignments. Understand that the notion of secular that I'm using here is not anti-religious secularity, but religiously neutral uh, secularity. Now in my chapter I uh, made the argument that the preferable kind of state that a Christian should hope for and work for is a secular state. Now how did I, did I come to that conclusion? Well, let me outline for you. I think that there are broadly three categories of state uh, that one will find uh, across the world. The first kind of state that a Christian probably wouldn't hope for is an anti-religious state. Now this is a kind of state in which uh, the nation and the laws of a nation uh, work against any kind of religious conviction. So we, we see this uh, for example in the former uh, Soviet Republic in uh, China. Uh, we even see it in some sort of harsh uh, anti-religious secular states like in France. Now in those conditions uh, what we see is that uh, the laws of a nation work against, they, they work against people uh, having religious beliefs and expressing their religious beliefs either in private or in public. Now surely you'll agree with me that kind of anti-religious state uh, wouldn't be desirable for a person who has Christian faith. The second general form of state uh, that uh, one could have in, in contemporary society is what's known as a religious state. Now a religious state is a state in which uh, a particular uh, set of laws are enacted or the government itself supports a particular set of religious convictions or indeed a particular religion. Now we see this uh, in some contexts where for example uh, Islam becomes the state religion and uh, Sharia law is implemented. Now as a Christian even if we were to ask for a Christian state naively some Christians believe that simply by having for example a Christian president or having uh, Christians in parliament or government or Christian laws in their state that somehow that would solve a nation's problems. Now the, the argument that I made was that this would not be desirable uh, for a Christian to do and the reason for that is um, that if we think about it as a Christian one should want the rights of every citizen in a nation whom God loves one should want all of those people to be able to flourish to achieve their best and to make their most uh, I, I often think about that statement that Archbishop Desmond Tutu made where he said uh, we are Christians God is not a Christian and I think that that's true Christianity is a religion that we have constructed but God loves all people and uh, God's love for all people extends to people of all faiths and no faiths even evangelical Christians I think would agree with that which is why they do evangelism now in a, a religious state we'll find that the rights and opportunities of people who don't believe in your particular religion might be worked against there's a second reason that I stated for this and this was that uh, what we find is that politics is often very fickle and it's not long-lasting and political positions and today it may be that it's your religious community that, prefer, that gets preferred treatment from the state. But those things can change very quickly. And when you have enacted in law rights for a particular religious grouping or religious tradition, you may very quickly find that you fall out of favor and that soon it's your rights that are being abused. So I think you may agree with me that a religious state is not really a desirable idea. Uh, for a Christian person to have. So now we get to uh, the third kind of state uh, that we could have in contemporary society and that's uh, what broadly I term as a secular state. Now this is the kind of state where uh, the government of the day rules impartially or serves impartially the people of its nation 
and their intention is to protect the rights and the, and the liberties of all of their citizens regardless of their religious conviction. Now I've often heard people saying that South Africa by virtue of its constitution uh, has such a secular state and indeed that's not true. Uh, South Africa's constitution is actually a multi-religious or a multi-faith constitution. It protects the rights of religious people uh, throughout society and probably my understanding of the kind of secular state that we want is that kind of state. Uh, a state that would look out for the rights of all of its citizens, protect those rights but also give religious freedoms to the different religious groupings to function. So this is the final point of my argument. Not only do I believe that uh, the, the most desirable form of state for the Christian is that kind of secular, religiously impartial state, but I also believe that because of the protections offered by that kind of state, uh, the church should be a strong, functional, serving church within its community, meeting the needs of its people, taking responsibility for moral development, uh, for ethical growth in the society, almost and ethics of responsibility. And I hope that you may agree with me that out of the three forms of state, a anti-religious state, a religious state that protects a particular kind of religion, and this kind of broad, secular, religiously impartial state, that for a Christian, certainly from the perspective of God's view, who loves all persons in society and wants every person to flourish, that this would be the most desirable kind of state, but that alongside that, we need a church that is active, that is engaged, that's serving and that meets the needs of the people and fulfills the will of God in society. So I hope that this has made a little bit of sense to you and certainly to my students who watch this video if you use it in assignments or you use that chapter which I'll link in the show notes below or the article that I've uh, just published uh, in the Stellenbosch Theological Journal uh, which is in, entitled A State Church looking at Dietrich Bonhoeffer's uh, Church and State and the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. If you find these articles helpful, uh, maybe we can think a little bit around uh, what we pray for. Uh, do we necessarily want uh, a Christian leader? Does it matter what faith uh, conviction the leader of our nation has? Uh, do we want Christian political parties? I, I would certainly say that I don't think that that is, is a favorable thing to have. So maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, leave a note uh, for me in the comments and I'll respond. Uh, hook up with me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. And uh, yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on this particular issue. So thanks for watching the video. Uh, if it's been helpful, please subscribe, like it, uh, share it with others. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna head back to the office. I have a few meetings and uh, no classes today but uh, some research to attend to. So uh, thanks for being with me today in beautiful Stellenbosch on this uh, spring day.